Phoenix Rising Over the World Chapter 21, Prime Minister is Critically Ill Within the Kinjang Hall of Longlin's Imperial Palace by now. Morong Tianshen has already completely grown into a full-fledged adult. Moreover, he was a wise and far-sighted ruler. However, even he was helpless when faced with this white-clothed youth in front of him, Yanner. Although you have already turned 18, you can still continue to live in the palace. This is an order. Legend see who dares to spread disparaging rumors. This white clothed youth was none other than Zimoyan, who was indeed, as the rumor said, he was dressed in white clothing. Standing just before the world with his peerless looks, women would all feel a sense of inferiority. When they see that stunning countenance, if it was not for the grave and stern eyes, then those who saw him would have thought Zimoyan was a woman instead of a man, your majesty. Zimoyan's handsome face was still as cold as ever as she spoke. Moyan is already an adult. Continuing to stay in the palace is no longer suitable. Neuron Tianchen inwardly sighed in his heart. His Yanner was too handsome. He was afraid when Zimoyan leaves the palace, he would attract bees and the dot you dot t dot ter flies. And with Yanner being young and vigorous, just at the prime of his life, they wouldn't be able to control themselves. Then, his Yanner wouldn't be his anymore. Hence, when Zimoyan should have left the palace when he had turned 18 earlier on that day, Murong Tianchen stubbornly delayed his leave till today. But he can't delay it any longer. Four years ago, he thought he was only curious for a short period of time. However, within these four years, he would think about Zimoyan constantly. He had once been troubled and in denial of that kind of feeling. It wasn't until the moment his Yanner was about to leave did he understand what he felt for Zimoyan was no longer of curiosity and pity. I. T was, instead, the kind that, whenever he saw Zimoyan, he would have the urge to pull the other into his embrace and thoroughly satisfy that sort of burning fervent desire. He was already in love with him. He fell in love with someone he shouldn't. He fell in love with a man. When all was said and. Done, even if he couldn't believe it, falling in love was still falling in love. He decided that he couldn't let go. He believed that if he just strived hard enough, he could definitely move Yanner. Break through the gender barrier to be together. With him, Yanner, he was helpless. But just when he was about to detain Zimoyan again, Prime Minister's wife, Niu Zhuangin's voice sounded outside the hall, let me in. I have urgent business with Moyan, madam. You can't directly enter right now. His Majesty is currently speaking with young Master Z. Had eunuch, sir, can't you please be flexible just this one? I really do have urgent business. If not, Wu Wu tilled 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 Liu Zhuangyi's voice was trembling and choking with emotion as it sounded. Z. Moyan frowned slightly. What's going on? Liu Zhuangyi would actually lose her composure like this. Morong Tianchen had taken notice of the white clothed youth's every movement standing below at all times. When he saw that the other seemed somewhat displeased, he became anxious. He then promptly instructed the person outside, Liu Di, let her in. Yes, the moment Liu Di received the emperor's permission outside, he released a breath. Letting Liu Zhuanya enter the hall, Liu Zhuanya entered with Red and eyes, kneeling and prostrating to Morong Tianchen. This subject greets your majesty. Long live your majesty. Rise. What's the matter, Madam Prime Minister? Morong Tianchen asked coldly when he saw the tears on Liu Zhuanyi's face. When Liu Zhuanyi was questioned at where it hurts, she cried as she informed Zi Moyan, Moyan, your father he, he won't make it. You should quickly come back to see him one last time. What? Zimoyan didn't think that it had only been this long, but the Zihaoshin who was in his prime would actually not make it any more. Without another word, Zimoyan immediately rushed in the direction of the prime minister's residence with a grave look. Her footsteps, though, spoke of her anxiety. This subject bid her farewell, Liu Zhuanya kutoed again before also following after Zimoyan out of Kinjun Hall. Murong Tianchan watched as the white figure withdrew farther and farther from him. Yet he was incapable of preventing it because he no longer has any more reason to detain Zimoyan, T.L. 
Well, yeah, look at that sudden turn of events, lol. Events, lol. Phoenix rising over the world. Chapter 22. Zi Heoshin suffers from strange poison upon arriving at the Prime Minister's residence. Zi Moyan noticed that the entire residence was lacking its original grandeur. Instead, there were extra traces of bleakness and mourning. Other than the few maidservants sweeping fallen leaves in main courtyard, other places were completely deserted. When she saw this situation, she asked Liu Zhuanya, What is going on? Why are there only these few maids present? Where are the others from before? Liu Zhuanya laughed wistfully. The prime minister being seriously ill isn't a matter of one or two days, since he does not manage things himself nowadays. People left one by one. This residence naturally would know. Longer be compared to before. Where's father? Quickly take me to see him. Zi Moyan didn't hound too excessively over this problem. Liu Zhuanya sighed. All right. Lao Yuan is in the tranquil pavilion in the rear flower garden. Let us go. I'll lead. Yu, Zi Moyan followed after Liu Zhuanya, arriving at tranquil pavilion. Said pavilion could be considered as one of the more peaceful places in the prime minister's residence, quiet and secluded. Its area was also rather extensive as it was. Surrounded by flowers and GRE.S.S, it was indeed the best place for a person to recuperate in. She stood outside, standing by the small cracks on the door and through them. She saw that it was pitch black inside, even though it was clearly broad. Daylight, but the interior of the pavilion appeared to be completely dreary. Liu Zhuanya spoke to her. Lei is just inside. Go on in, Di Moyen nodded, pushed open the door, and entered. The room was dark and there wasn't a superfluous amount of decorations placed in the clear open inside. After all, too many things would not be beneficial in a place for recuperation. She maneuvered around a huge screen and saw Zi Heoshin lying on top of the bed. This prime minister no longer had the grace. From the former days, on the contrary, he became extremely fragile, his beard turned gray, his face incomparably pale, but his lips were tinged purple. The Moyan naturally understood. This was the symptom of being poisoned. She came to his side and sat down as she said indifferently, I've come, what do you want from me? When Zi Heoshin heard her voice, he strained open his somewhat swollen red eyes. You came, Kakagi. He had just spoke a few words when he started a violent coughing fit. Who did it? The Moyan restrained the emotion in her eyes, inquiring coldly. The Heoshin sighed. It's not important who did this anymore. I called you because I have a few things to request of you. Me, child. The Heoshin slightly raised both of his hands, but then placed them back down. Perhaps I no longer have this kind of right, since I have not fulfilled the role of a father after all. But I still wanted to beseech you. Be the replacement in my place. The Moyan raised a brow. You want me to take revenge for you? No, I want you to tie down Wo Buren, protect Longlin's balance of power. Wo Buren. The Moyan coolly spared glanced at the old man whose life was on the verge of its end. How would? You know I would act according to your request. You will. The trace of a self-confident smile surfaced on Zi Heiwishin's pale face. I think handing it over to you will make me feel at ease. Why did you inform me instead of elder brother? Zi Moyan inquired IMPA.S.S.I.V.I.L.I. Zi Heoshin coughed a few times, readjusting his breath as he continued, although I know you definitely will not be willing to serve under the emperor. I know you will not let Woburin expand his own influence. Be careful of the power behind his back. Is he... The culprit that poisoned you, no, Zi Heoshin shook his head, it's not him. He, right at this moment, his complexion suddenly turned green, then red. Before a smothered HMPH, both of his EYF.A.L.L.S rolled over, and he died just like that. Zi Moyan turned pale from shock, but she quickly checked his breath only to find there were no more. Lily White Hand was then placed on his neck, checking for a pulse but there was none either. Zi Moyan's complexion turned somewhat unsightly. Although she has read many medical books these past years and could determine that Zi Heoshin was poisoned by looking, 
but she has never seen this kind of poison before. It seemed like a type of chronic poison, but if the poison dot you dot Mila Ted too much, the person could die at any time. Zi Heoshin's complexion now had returned to before. Other than the pale lips, it was like he had died of a serious illness. She could no longer spot any traces of him being poisoned. If she hadn't seen seen from just now, then she might have also thought Zi Heoshin died from nothing but a serious illness. This type of poison was truly peculiar. After the person dies, you cannot find any signs of the person being poisoned at all. Footnote 1. Respectful address to the master of the house. Phoenix rising over the world. Chapter 23 Zi Heoshin's death Yi Moyan stepped out of the room. Liu Zhuanya was still waiting outside. Once she saw Zi Moyan, she immediately went forward and asked anxiously, How is Lowy? Is he better? He's dead. Zi Moyan apathetically answered, Although Zi Heoshin was his father in name, but she still didn't have any sentiments towards him to speak of. Have people go take care of the funeral arrangements without delay. What? Lei is dead, Liu Zhuanya. Received a shock when she heard this news, fainting on the spot. After Zi Moyan took good care of all the arrangements, she called for a servant to deliver a letter to Zi Haran. The servant left the capital that very night, rushing towards the borders and delivered the news of their father's death to Zi Haran. Li Moyan stayed in the prime minister's residence for a few days, which made Murong Tianshan restless within the imperial palace. The image of that unique figure dressed in white, robes with jade-like skin appeared in his mind every day and night, even if it was because of a special C I or C dot U dot Ms. T A N C E that she must stay in the prime minister's residence. Unable to enter the palace, Murong Tianshan had no methods to look after Z. Moyan, allowing him to stay by his side, but he still worries, since Zi Moyan has already grown into a man at the prime of his life. What if he meets some lady on this one leave and falls in love at first sight? Murong Tianshan wouldn't even have the chance to regret by that time. Standing by the side, Eunuch Liu Di saw his master in such restlessness, and after following by his side for so long, he naturally knew the very reason for it. Hence, he approached the emperor's side, respectfully, suggested, Your Majesty, how about letting this servant go invite young Master Z to visit the palace? Rumor has it that Prime Minister is dead, Your Majesty. Does Your Majesty not need to appoint a new Prime Minister? When Murong Tianchen heard Liu Di's suggestion, a radiant glint flickered through his eyes. He gave Liu Di a look of appreciation. Then have young Master Z invited into the palace to discuss the matter of position of the prime. Minister, understood, this servant will go at. Once, when Liu Di saw the emperor's face eased up, his heart also became more happy. He immediately left the imperial palace, arrived at the Z residence. One of the servants of the Z residence recognized Liu Di because Liu Di also came over too. Their residence several times, when he saw Liu Di, he hurriedly welcomed him, arching his back into a bow as he asked, don't know what business had Yuna came over to the Z residence for. Liu Di saw this servant can be regarded as fairly clever, so he answered him in an amicable manner, this eunuch is looking for young Master Z, why don't you show this eunuch the road, yes. The servant lead Liu Di over to the outside of Z Moyan's place of residence knocking on the door and inform the person inside. Second young master, Eunuch Liu came saying he is looking for you. All right, please come in Eunuch Liu. A clear yet cold voice came from inside. Then sounded another time directed at the servant. You can leave first. Yes, after the house servant left, Liu Di pushed open the door. Entering, he saw Zi Moyan, dressed in white robes with a white fabric draped over his shoulders calmly sitting and drinking tea. Liu Di hurriedly walked over, cautiously delivered. Young Master Zi, His Majesty entrusted me to invite you into the palace. I don't think it is convenient to enter the palace right now. Zi Moyan naturally knew that it was impossible for anyone to wear mourning clothes to see the emperor in fear of bringing bad luck to the, the emperor. However, 
Zimayan knew that since he actually sent Liu Di over, he no doubt already prepared a good reason for it. Liu Di, being the head eunuch by the emperor's side, have also seen many high officials and and dot o dot b i l i ties. However, he didn't know why, but he was actually somewhat fearful of a white-clothed youth who only just turned eighteen on Zimayan's person. Liu Di felt a pressure that was not inferior of the one he felt when standing in front of the emperor. Even he himself wasn't fully aware of that kind of trembling fear he felt as he spoke cautiously to Zimoyan each time. Young master, his Majesty has said he needs to discuss the matter related to the prime minister's position with you. Oh, Zimoyan put the teacup down. In truth, she originally have no interest in the prime minister's position. But the conversation with Zi Heijun let her felt that she must win over this position, since it was as such she really still need to give the imperial palace a visit. Hence, she stood up. All right, then let me change into another set of clothes and follow you into the palace at once. Yes, good. Then this servant will be waiting outside. Liu Di relaxed inwardly, then carefully. Retreated outside, allowing Zi Moyan to change clothes. Change clothes. Phoenix rising over the world. Chapter twenty four. Summoned into the palace, Zi Moyan arrived in the palace, and under Liu Di's instructions, she didn't go to the Injung Hall or the Imperial Study, but to the Falling Flower Pavilion. Liu Di was quite clever, naturally knowing that once he brought Zi Moyan to this point, he didn't need to go inside. He said to Zi Moyan, "Gongzi." His Majesty is inside, waiting for you. Please enter. Falling Flower Pavilion's surroundings were all residences. Yet in the middle was an enormous artificial lake, and by the lakeside was a pavilion. Li Moyan saw one bright yellow robed Muran Tian Chen sitting within the pavilion. Upon seeing this, she headed in the direction of the pavilion. On the table were filled with different kinds of her favorite snacks and pastries. When Murong Tianchen saw that she'd arrived, his previously completely a scold face immediately shone brightly like the sun. Yanner, he gently gestured a hand towards Zi Moyan, patting the seat beside him. Quickly, come sit here. Zi Moyan approached the seat opposite of him and sat them. She seemed to be intentionally keeping a distance from him. Upon seeing this, Murong Tianchen slightly frowned, somewhat unhappy. Yanner, why are you sitting so far away? How is it convenient for us to talk when you're sitting that far? If you have something to say, then make it quick. Li Moyan said coldly. She sure didn't have the time to chat with him right now. She still has many things that needed to be taken care of. Despite feeling somewhat uncomfortable inside, Murong Tianchen didn't dare to offend his darling Yanner. He picked a few pastries with his chopsticks, placing them into Zi Moyan's bowl. As he coaxed, "These are are your most favorite pastries. You probably haven't ate dinner, right? Eat some of these to fill your stomach." She didn't eat any of those pastries, but retrieved a golden medallion from her sleeve. You gave this golden medallion to me on one of my birthdays. You said that this medallion could excuse my death once. But at the same time, it could also request you to fulfill one of my wishes. I don't know if it still counts. An emperor does not go back on his words. What is your wish? If it is within Jin's powers, then Jin will definitely help you accomplish it. I want the prime minister's position. She had unceremoniously spoke her request. She didn't feel like talking in riddles with him, so she was extremely straightforward speaking out this wish. Upon hearing this. Murong Tianchen smiled lightly. A trace of pampering flashed across his eyes as he gently answered, "As long as it's Yanner requests, then Jin will agree to them all. You want to become the prime minister? This isn't too difficult." Li Moyan was startled when she heard his words, but still replied calmly, "Then that's good. If there isn't anything else, then I'll leave first." She stood up with the intention to leave greatly. Alarmed, Morong Tianchen immediately stood up to halt her. Yanner, why the rush? Can you not keep Jin company for a bit longer? He had gone through great difficulties to see him, but Zi Moyan sure was something. The latter wanted to leave after 
Just saying a few sentences. Zmyimpa.s.s. Ivy Eli gave him a glance, but she turned a blind eye to the affection that his eyes revealed. You Majesty, is there still something else? If not, then Moyen will request to be excused first. She was neither servile nor overbearing as she gave Murong Tian Chen a courtesy that was deliberately alienating him. A trace of disappointment flickered across Murong Tian Chen's eyes. But it was just a brief moment before it disappeared within the depths of his pupils. He knew that there were not only a disparity in their positions, but the bigger disparity was in their gender. Therefore, if he wanted Zi Moyan to accept his feelings, it wouldn't be an easy matter. So he mustn't be anxious. As long as Zi Moyan was still by his side, then he'll put forth the effort. There'll be a day where he will bend Zi Moyan. Morong Tianshen sighed helplessly. All right, Yanner. Though you should sleep early tonight, so you can come to court early tomorrow. Jen will have already issued the imperial decree to appoint you as the prime minister by then. So go back and rest. Yes, Zi Moyan leave without looking back. There wasn't even a trace of reluctance. Morong Tianshen watched that retreating white figure dazedly. He then picked up the golden medallion on the table, placing it in front of his nose to sniff. He greedily absorbed scent on it that belonged to Zi Moyan and helplessly laughed. This originally was for you to have a big use, but didn't expect you to actually use it here. He had originally planned to have Zi Moyan be the prime minister. This way, the golden medallion didn't really come to much use. He gently stroked the medallion repeatedly. There will be a day that Yanner will understand his heart. Sure enough, just as Morong Tianchen had said, once she returned home, Liu Zhuangya took out the imperial decree that had arrived not too long ago. The Moyan took the imperial decree from Liu Zhuangya's hands, rolling it open, and as expected, it was the decree to appoint him as the prime minister. So he had prepared it at an earlier time. Then why did he still call him to especially make a trip into the palace? Zi Moyan had thought previously that the reason Rong Tianchen had looked for her was for him to gain benefits for his own interest. Weren't all emperors like that? Using the methods of a ruler while at the same time considering the balance of power among one's subject, Tis were all for one's own power to centralize. Even more, maximizing the emperor's benefits. She didn't understand. T L. I don't know about you guys, but that last action with the medallion, Morong Tianshan was creepy. Creepy. Phoenix rising over the world. Chapter twenty five. Succeeding the position of the prime minister. Attending court on the eve of the day that Zi Moyan succeeded her father's position, becoming the prime minister. The news spread quickly throughout the capital in a flash. After Wu Buren learned of this news, he didn't have much reaction, although this matter was out of his expectation. But it didn't have any influence to the general picture. What can a baby who's still wet behind the ears possibly do? Holding power, it would still be the same as before. It won't be enough of a threat against him, and it would also not change anything. Wu Buren was unperturbed, but his loyal followers of the court weren't. A young-looking and seemed to have somewhat of a position among the officials spoke out to Wu Buren. It wasn't easy to get rid of one Zi Heoshen. Yet now Zi Moyan had appeared. Their Zi family are really troublesome. Wu Buren chuckled. There's no need for Minister Li to be sullen. It's just an infant after all. His father has already been killed by us. What can he accomplish in this situation? Li Kongrong was still very worried. Although he's just an infant, but I've heard that this infant's abilities aren't small, and the emperor also took good care to doubt after him. I'm only afraid that he would become our biggest obstacle in the future. H M P H. Wu Buren narrowed his eyes, a glint of cold light flickering through them. Then we'll kill him off while he's still in the cradle. Upon hearing Wu Buren's speech, the other officials shared a look with each other. Then they stood up at the same time. Bowing towards Wu Buren, we will follow accordingly to the Prime Minister with no questions asked, and will always be at your beck and call. We're only now waiting for Prime Minister's one sentence. Wu Buren smiled in satisfaction. His smile carried a trace of arrogance as he hummed in his head. 
Don't mention that infant, even if it was the emperor. There will be a day where I will get rid of them all, after the other officials had all left. A woman dressed in dark green robes with a green cloak over her head appeared within Wo Baron's meeting room. M. Wo Buren wasn't even the least bit surprised when he saw this young woman. Rather, he was still calmly playing with the little bird in his hand. Emissary really has good methods. Killing the Zheoshin that I couldn't remove in all these years, however, he indeed still didn't expect he would die in your hands in the end. To Wo Baron's praise, the woman didn't respond. She only coldly glanced at him. Well, Buren, the matter that Master told you to do, you failed over and over again. It looks like you're really useless. Wo Buren laughed. Heartily, you're too polite, emissary. Don't know what Master wants me to do this time. Wo Buren was extremely clear that Master absolutely would not kill him. Because he was a chess piece that Master spent a great deal of effort to slip into long. Lin's inner echelon, he wouldn't easily destroy him. The woman took out something wrapped in red cloth and a letter from within her wide sleeve. Pa.s. Sing it over to Wo Buren. This is the thing Master told me to give to you. On top of it is the letter from Master. Remember to get rid of it after you finish reading. Wo Buren received the item and respectfully gave the woman a bow. Understood. I'll see emissary off. HMPH. The woman coldly hum-fed, disappearing with but a flash of green. Shadow, early next morning, Zimoyan woke up and after freshening up with the morning routines, she wore the indigo official's uniform that had been delivered. Then she saw in the 8th carrier palanquin, proceeding off towards the imperial palace. The color of this official's uniform also represented one's rank in court. It follow as red, orange, yellow, green, dark green, blue, and purple with purple being the highest, in general. First rank officials wore violet, but going up another rank. From that would be indigo, which is the color of the prime minister. Longlin Empire previously only had one prime minister. But later because the emperor worried that the prime minister's power would be too concentrated. So the positions split in. Two, one was the left prime minister, the other the right, one of civil while the other of military respectively. They each restrict the other with no differentiations of power among them, but only in the matters. That they each manage, the left prime minister was to manage civil affairs while the right prime minister was in charge of military affairs. Wo Buren was the left and Zimoyan was the right prime minister, therefore. With her older brother also being an important general, nearly more. Then half of the military power belongs to the Z family. When Zimoyan climbed down from the palanquin that had stopped in front of the palace gates, there were many officials coming over to congratulate her. Her lips arced into a discreet cold. Smile upon seeing this. It was only a few sweet talkers flattering and fawning. They may appear intimate, but they're actually laughing at you in their hearts. Zimoyan didn't have a good opinion of these people, therefore she appeared extremely. Indifferent and unreasonable, when other officials saw that this new prime minister wasn't that easy to get close to, none of them went to be snubbed despite showing good intentions, generally. Officials would go to the imperial palaces very first, and the largest palace hall, the Radiant Dragon Hall to conduct court, all officials have came to the aforementioned hall, waiting patiently for the emperor's arrival. The emperor seemed to be earlier today compared to the past, Although court also started in advance in the past, but the officials would all have to wait for more than 10 minutes in advance. However, this time, they only needed to wait one minute before they heard that the emperor has arrived. The court has started more than 10 minutes in advance this time. Time. time.